Hello everybody and welcome back to a very awesome episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator where we are going to be checking out a new tool specifically aimed at VR users. But whether you're in VR or 2D, you're going to want to check this one out because it is absolutely fantastic and very, very much so something I think we've all been waiting for. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. Okay, guys. So first off, welcome back. Thank you guys all for joining today. And the biggest thing that I am going to tell you guys right now is one of the biggest immersion breakers for me is any time that I have to leave a simulator and move over to the desktop, whether it be for an application, web browser, email, whatever it may be, Discord chat. All of these things have now been addressed in this very early access. This is very important for me to tell you guys. It is an early access version of this software called FS desktop a link to it will be down in the description below but now let's talk about what it does fs desktop allows you to bring any open screen that you currently have on your desktop over to the simulator meaning that you are opening it directly from the simulator toolbar which i'm obviously going to be demonstrating here in a minute now you can try this application completely free of charge for three days without buying and then when you buy you actually get to choose essentially how much you pay ranging from anywhere from 15 dollars up to 50 dollars. but basically it's your decision you decide what the value is you decide whether it's it's worth it to purchase to you and you determine uh within that price range how much you're willing to pay for the application they also have a great Discord channel, which offers a ton of support. And this is also, once again, very critical as this is a ver very early access version of the software. Now, again, what does it do? It brings external screens into the simulator. This could be things like spad.next, Discord, uh, a calculator. It could be um, a web page that, uh, that you need to click on, Navigraph charts if you don't want to use the in-game application. Um, your flight plan if you're using simbrief.com no more having to look to a second monitor or anything like that you can have it directly overlay in the sim so we're going to be demonstrating quite a bit of that here in just a minute but i wanted you guys to at least have a understanding of what the limitations are certain things that you cannot do right now the mouse wheel for example if you're scrolling through a web browser as we are doing right now now this is the actual web browser itself we're not using the tool right now uh, we cannot do this using the mouse wheel at this time uh, certain multifunction clicks such as drop down menus and things like that are not functional at this time. But there are a bunch of features that are going to be added as time goes on. Again, this is very early access. You guys are going to hear me say that a lot. Okay, so what we're doing right now is this essentially an alpha version or beta version, however you want to describe it. Uh, but uh, it gives us an opportunity to really enhance the simulation experience. 2D users, I think that we are still going to have a ton of use out of this. The things that I can see immediately applying to myself as a content creator is going to be things like uh, OBS, and I'm going to be showing that. Um, same thing with SimBrief. Like if you guys watch my flight, my videos where I do full flights, uh, I like to use the PDF view of a flight plan. I can now have that overlaid in the sim and side by side with my, uh, whether it be an MCDU, FMS, whatever, um, and simply be able to, you know, rotate that way. Um, and enter in my data rather than having to bounce back from screen to screen. So where this really also offers some some shine is that it limits the necessity for multiple monitors as well as multiple screens in many ways. Now there's a couple different caveats that you have to be aware of right off the get gate too. Minimized windows may or may not function it says not to have them minimized in the installation. If you guys download it and install it, make sure you go through the tour and it breaks down all the limitations for you. Um, but I've actually had mixed results between um, uh, each one, whether it be minimized or unminimized, so it depends. The other thing it recommends is possibly having these uh, running Microsoft Flight Simulator in windowed mode, which I do anyway. Again, makes it a bit easier for recording and gives me access externally that I currently use. 
And then finally, it does recommend that you have certain windows overlaying Microsoft Flight Simulator slightly. However, I have not had to do that yet and I have not ran into any issues, knock on wood. But I am simply making you guys aware of the limitations that are very clearly stated in the uh, tour phase of the application. So with that being said, guys, those are pretty much all the big ones that I wanted to get across. Downloading it is very simple. You simply attach a username to it, you know, first and last name, however you want to do it, and an email address. You will then get a link to download the software. Same thing after you purchase it. Um, after you purchase it, you will get an email link with the license key, and it's very simple to uh, attach it to it. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get back into the simulator, and I'm going to show you guys how the application works, and we're going to play around with it a little bit. I've left a lot of the testing for this video, so that way you guys can see the, both the good and the bad in the raw, and you don't have to worry about me leaving any of the negatives out. Anything that happens, you guys will be the first ones to see it, just as me. All right, so now let's go ahead and start getting into how to actually use this particular amazing piece of software that I love so much. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come up to the toolbar and it's already got a icon ready for you. We're gonna click on it, open it up, and it gives you an option of all of your currently available windows that are open. So here you can see my recordings folder. Here we got SPAD Next. Now let's use SPAD Next as our start because I don't have anything that's actually uh, created here for this particular application. So what I'm gonna try to do here, I'm gonna see if we can manipulate it at all. Now it did bring it to the front here, and it actually is allowing me to change it. Now it takes a second, but it is changing. Now one of the things that I would normally do here is we'd wanna come over, create a new profile for the Cessna as I don't have one, but this is one of the other limitations. Keyboard entry does not work at this time. Okay, again, I believe this is a future development option that will be uh, around later on. But you'll actually be able to, from the simulator, which is where we are here, be able to actually create keyboard entry into web browsers, etc., and things like that. So you do still want to get set up beforehand with any of your necessary tools or options. But like, for example, even something as simple as bringing up a calculator. Okay, if you need a calculator for any reason, you can actually use it. Now there is a slight delay because it's repeating the image, but it's working. And one of the things that I find myself going to be using it the most for would be something like this. Notice that I just told it to generate the PDF view. Now I cannot, like I said, I can't use my mouse wheel, but one of the things that I can do is this. Is we can use the zoom functionality directly from the uh, display and I should be able to still click and hold onto the scroll bar, or at the very least, use the down arrow, and you can see it is repeating. And so we can click and hold. Now, obviously for 2D view, I have a bunch of different options of what I could do. For example, I can actually click on the browser and take it to the page that I want it to be on. but that does repeat here in the screen, as you can see. But think about how advantageous this will be in VR. In VR, you still have down arrows, you still have zoom functionality that you can use, so you don't have to leave the cockpit anymore. Okay, it's got a ton of different, very versatile options. Um, if you were using something like, you know, Little Nav Map or something, and actually, I don't know, Little Nav Map may have it. I haven't actually tried it in quite a long time, to be completely honest. Um, but if you're using something that doesn't currently have any kind of in-sim toolbar, like, for example, Navigraph Charts 8, when it first came out, the toolbar option wasn't available. So this would give us still option to be able to use that and be able to see our different uh, flight plans and creation. There's a ton of different uh, functionality or uh, applications for this kind of software that really makes it very, very handy to have on board. And the thing that I love most about these kinds of things, like, again, Discord here. Now, Discord, you could couldn't type to someone, but you can join a voice channel. Okay, uh, you would anything like I said, anything that requires a left mouse click, you could absolutely do. Um, right click functionality again, because that brings up a pop up menu would not be functional. For example, if we come over here back to SPAD, I can't click on anything. You can see the camera is still moving with inside the sim, so you can't do any kind of right click or drop menu functionality yet. That's the that's the biggest thing to remember is yet. Okay, it is coming. 
So I just wanted, this doesn't have to be a very long video, guys. I just wanted to simply show you what this amazing tool does. And to me, this is very, very amazing. I am very happy about this. You know, one of the things, for example, like the injector here um, is I don't think that I started it. Uh, so, oh, so there it goes. Took me a second, but it refreshed. So now I could come over here and actually start the injection. And if we want to take a peek, if we go back to our window picker, you can see the injector started. Um, so a bunch of really cool applications, or really cool possibilities. Again, I can't stress enough, this is optimized for virtual reality. Um, so it's really ideal for you VR users to have an ability to access your desktop applications, screens, browsers, etc., without having to lift the headset. Um, so you guys, I think, are going to find the most benefit from this by far. But even as I showed here, even in 2D, especially if you're operating on a single monitor, you have some uh, leverage here. So just remember some of the limitations. Once again, uh, no drop down menus, no right click functionality as of yet, and no keyboard entry, I think, are the three biggest ones that I had an issue with. There's a couple other little things, so make sure if you do download it, free three-day trial. Uh, if you do download it, make sure that you go through the tour. Don't skip the tour because the tour will tell you exactly what the limitations are and as well as give you some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of it in its current state. Remember, once again, it is a very, very early access piece of software, uh, so give it time to mature, give it time to develop. Um, I'm already very pleased with it as is. I have already, out of my own pocket, I did purchase the uh, software. Remember that you also have some uh, pay options, anywhere from $5 or $15 up to $50. You get to choose sort of the price range at which you're feeling that the software is worth to you. So take some time with it. Take three days and play with it for free and, and get some... Uh, get some understanding of how it functions and, and what kind of applications you could consider using on it. Pay attention to the project uh, um, track notes and where it's, it's heading and some future functionality that will be coming down the line and see if maybe that's something that you're definitely gonna want later on. I will say as working with the developer before, he's the same developer who did FS Kneeboard, um, he does great work and he's very, very good about responding and he listens to his Discord. He listens to uh, everyone talk and talk out their ideas. So uh, definitely uh, feel free to contribute your ideas and thoughts on the Discord channel to them. But let me know if you guys uh, end up picking this up, what you think down below. And even if you don't pick it up, let me know what your thoughts are on it. Maybe something that would make it better and hopefully help the developer improve the project even more. I, again, am thoroughly impressed with it. I'm super excited for something like this. And honestly, I'm kind of hoping that he finds a way to integrate this with other simulators. TCS World. Um, you know, I think it would be really handy to have it there. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you guys hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Many of the viewer base and those of you who like my videos aren't subscribed yet. So make sure that you join the family. We'd love to have you on board. And above all else, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.